Thank you guys so much for walking. Walking. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I promise I didn't have a Red Bull before I was drinking this. Music just makes me that excited. Hey guys, it's William. Welcome back to The Shape Game. Today we're going to be doing something... How often do I say this? A little different. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about my top 10 favorite concerts I've ever been to. Don't know why I said it like that. Uh, so, let's get into it. I have probably been to... I don't know how you count this. I've been to a couple festivals, Jazz Fest, you know, and uh, some other more indie ones. So I count the shows I saw there as concerts. Otherwise, I think it'd be a little over 10 that I've been to. Combining all the ones from festivals and stuff, it's maybe been around 20 for me. Um, it's not like my dad and mom, who my dad's been to like a couple hundred concerts in his life. My mom has been to not that much, but a lot because of my dad. So anyways, uh, I love music so much. Uh, I really, really uh, have to, what's the right word? I don't mind going to concerts. I really like them, uh, but I'm a homebody, you know, and it has to be a very special musical group for me, for me to want to go see them live. Yes, there's going to be one band that's repeated twice on this list, different venues, different years, so don't be like, you know, oh, oh, oh. they're like my favorite band ever. Don't know why I sounded like a teenager from the 2000s with that, but uh, I got my trusty list, and let's get to it. There is no particular order for this list. It is as it came to me in terms of me thinking of the concerts I've been to and which ones I would include on this list, so let's get to it. Shocker, first one I thought of was Wilco. Uh, probably one of the first concerts I saw that I wanted to go see. Because before this, you know, my parents, when we were younger, would be like, oh, uh, there's, you know, a festival happening or there's a show happening and we want to go and we're going to take you with us. And it's not that I didn't want to be there, it's just that I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to see this person. It was more just, oh, they happen to be playing there, I think I know this person, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, I was 16 when I got to see this concert. It was awesome. I still, you know, I'm not ranking these, but if I had to, this would be a contention for number one between that and another concert on this list. This concert, uh, I already love Wilco. I've listened to their entire discography. Uh, I, I will, I've seen them several times, uh, almost, I, I wouldn't say 10, but close to 10 times. I've seen the singer Jeff Tweedy on his own. I've seen them perform at their uh, inauguration into the, uh, you know, Austin City Limits Hall of Fame. I've seen them at Jazz Fest. Wilco, I just love this band so much. Their shows are so, uh, emotional, but not, it's just, I don't know, for me, emotional. I just love their music and their concerts are always an experience and I could I, I don't think I'll ever get tired of seeing them live. And even when there's new music that they release that I'm not as big of a fan of as their old stuff, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I'm still gonna go see those shows. I love Wilco, they're amazing. Can't wait to see them again. Uh, this was the first concert, I like I said, I saw that I was interested in going to see on my own with my dad. Uh, it was at Fair Park in uh, Dallas. It was a beautiful venue. Uh, not all the seats had been sold yet. And so when we got there, it wasn't a packed, packed house. And uh, we found some seats that weren't the ones we got. They were amazing and got to sit there the entire show. It was, it was just beautiful. Uh, Wilco concerts are always different. You know, they try to be a little different each time. Their set lists are always different. Uh, they do different variations of the songs that they're playing each time. Uh, this tour was amazing. They had like giant, I'm gonna butcher how this is explained, but like giant cotton balls and like hanging strips of LEDs above the stage. So they would project things onto it. And it was just so beautiful, you know, to watch that. Like I said, it was just, it was just a great time. I love the experience. Um, Wilco has a habit of releasing previous live shows online for you to purchase. And they have released so many of the shows that I have been to. And uh, of course, the one they've never released is that one. Bummer, because I would have loved to, I'd love to listen to that concert again. But that's how it is. Unfortunately, can't relive that one except in my mind. Uh, so that's that. Uh, great show though, I loved it. The opener, I, I just can't believe that my dad and I didn't recognize who he was until after the show. 
uh, literally, he and I were talking the whole time, and I try not to do this anymore, but my dad and I were talking the whole time during the opener. Everyone there was just talking and moving around, finding their seats, and it really, it literally, it's Nick Lowe, and cool to be, uh, Cruel to be Kind, a song that he's played. He's literally up there. This dude was like on the charts back in like 70s, 80s, and my dad's heard him more than I have, but I've heard him too, and suddenly, it's not until after the show, we're like, oh my gosh, that was, you know, him. Literally, the curtain's not up, he's staying in front of the curtain, it's just him and his guitar, and he's playing, and people aren't even really paying attention, you know? And hey, it's just how you do things, I guess. It's you at a concert. That man is like, it's just crazy to think that instead of just, you know, your new up-and-coming person, that, okay, I get why you don't know them, you know? This dude was, you know, Nick Lowe, and it was just awesome that he was the opener, and I wish I had known that. I would have paid more attention to his opening act, but from what I remember, it was awesome, and I just, I was like, wow, that guy's pretty good, you know? I wonder what that older guy's doing up there. Just crazy. So, anyways, next, we're going straight from 2011, straight to a couple days ago, as of filming this, uh, back at the Moody Center. I've never been to the Moody Center before, uh, went with my dad. Uh, I think every concert on this list I've been to with my dad, except for one where I went with my mom. Um, I, I wouldn't, I, I'm not a huge fan of going to any experience alone. I like being with people. Uh, I like being with friends or family at concerts just because it's more fun to be with people for the experience. Uh, so anyways, uh, this show, I love Beck. He, besides Wilco, he might be my favorite solo artist. Uh, I just love Beck. I mean, uh, Modern Guilt is such a good album. But that being said, I love most of the albums that Beck has released. And ever since I started listening to him, maybe five years ago, I've wanted to see him live. Think about Texas is not every musical group, singer, or band wants to come to Texas. I don't know if it's it, what the reasons are, if it's because it's so big, they know they can't just do one spot, they have to do multiple. I don't know if it's politics. I really don't know. But uh, I missed Beck already once in Texas and that was a huge bummer and so the fact that I got to see him finally was amazing and it's funny that I put this on the list right after that 2011 one because honestly this Beck concert is tied. It's crazy how it, it, it literally I just saw them and I consider it to be one of the best shows I've ever seen. Uh, not just because the, they had like triple screens lined up, so there was like all these cool video effects for each song that was different. Not even just that, they played three songs from Modern Guilt, uh, which is an album that I, that's probably my favorite album by Beck and in my top 10 of all time in general albums. And I just didn't expect him to play any of that music because it's, it's not, it's more uh, depressing and like a uh, topical about like society and it's not one of his popular albums, you know? There's a lot more, ooh, you know, let's play Devil's Haircut, you know, that's a great popular song, or, uh, you know, Loser, you know, or even Wow by his, his newer stuff, you know? But the fact that he played three for my favorite album of all time it, by him was just like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then uh, towards the end of the show, he announced something that was even way more awesome, that the band he was playing with on stage, he had not played with in eight years, but was the band that he recorded his first few albums with. And I'm just like, this is amazing. Not, it's not always that you have, because he's a solo artist really, it's not always that you have a musician like that that keeps the band consistent. So the fact that of all the shows I get to see of him, it's with the band that literally, on his first records ever, is that they were the recording band. And that's just, that was amazing. It was such a great show, so much energy. Uh, I, I don't really dance at concerts. It's just not my thing. I I literally was dancing. It was just, I love Beck. I, I, he's so high energy. He's such a goof when it comes to his dancing on stage. He's just such a good entertainer. And it was great. I love it. Beck is incredible. I could go on forever talking about him. Uh, I'm going to do more Music Mondays eventually. And I'm definitely, I got several Beck albums I would love to discuss. Especially Modern Guilt. Uh, but man, what an amazing show. I just, I, I, it's, it's crazy because I think, maybe it's just me, but I feel like there are bands and, or singers that you can go to even if you know nothing about them and you will enjoy the concert. I think Beck's one of those. Next up, this is July 1st, 2022, Fleet Foxes at the Factory. Now I saw this with my mom and I, I <coughs> excuse me. You know, I'm sure there's people out there who are like, you know, oh, you saw it with your mom, you saw it with your dad. 
My parents are awesome. I don't think I would enjoy music as much as I do if it was not for them and how they raised me and all the awesome music they played while I was growing up. So I love, like I said, going to shows with family and friends. It just, it's awesome. Uh, I've listened to Fleet Foxes probably since I was like 14 and never thought I would see them live. Uh, just because at the time I started listening to them, they had already uh, not broken up, but gone on hiatus. And well, the lead singer, uh, I'm gonna hope I don't butcher this, Robin Peckinold, uh, went to college. And so I'm like, oh, well, I mean, and some of the other band members had gone to do other things. So I was like, well, there's a chance I'm never gonna see this band. And so they finally got back together years later, years later. And I get to see them, and it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, I, based on the music I listened to from them and clips I've seen on YouTube of them, I knew that they were a very uh, kind group or a, uh, a group of people that seemed like genuinely good people. And so that was just reaffirmed. I mean, it was, you know, they were just so much fun, such kind vibes. It's weird to say, but you know, it was just really fun to be there. Uh, the audience was one of the most diverse audiences I have ever seen. You know, you had uh, all uh, age groups, all ethnicities, you had single people, uh, couples, uh, elderly, you had families who brought their like five kids, you know, and it's just, that just tells you like Flea Fox is that type of music where it's like, music, it shouldn't matter who you are anyways with any music, but Flea Fox is just pulls everyone together and it was a great show. Uh, another reason I enjoyed that show was the fact that at the very beginning, before the opening act came on, uh, the uh, Robin Peckinold came on stage, which I've not seen this since then. Uh, and he came on stage, everyone starts cheering. He's like, thank you, thank you. I just want you guys to know that I am here to tell you about the opening act. And I'm, I feel so bad, I can't remember the guy, but he was uh, a Brazilian uh, guitarist and he sang in Portuguese and it was beautiful. And he comes out and, and uh, Robin comes out to say, hey, this guy's amazing. We picked this guy to be our opener because he's awesome. We're bringing him on tour everywhere. We want to make music with him in the future. Please listen to him. This guy's awesome. And it made such a difference because with opening acts, you don't necessarily know how many people are going to be paying attention during them. Some people come for the opening act. Some people just are standing and talking while the opening act is playing. Because the lead singer of the main band that was playing came out and said that, almost everyone was silent the entire time and paid attention to this opener that I had not heard of before. And I'm pretty sure half of the people hadn't heard of. And that was just so cool and genuine of the lead singer of the main band to come out and say, whoa, whoa, whoa I know you guys are here to see me, but our opener is really good. April 7th, 2023, Raylan Baxter at Tulips. Saw that with my uh, one of my best friends, Melissa. Uh, I have been a fan of Raylan Baxter for quite a long time as well. He is one of those artists that I heard a song and uh, it was Yellow Eyes. And then for years it was on a playlist of mine. And every time it would come on, I would think that is such a beautiful song. And it took me so long, and I hate when this happens, but it took me so long until I was like, you know what? I really like that song. I should listen to the album it's from. So I did. And I was like, oh my God, this album is perfect. Once again, probably my top 10 greatest albums of all time now. And then he finally releases a new album and it's amazing too. And he's like, I'm going on tour. And he came to Texas. I'm like, this is amazing. It was a great show. I enjoyed every part of it. The only problem, only problem was that it was standing only. And we got there, Melissa and I got there so early. We saw, we were there before the opener even had a chance to start playing. And literally it was hours. It was like five hours straight of standing. and. It, even Melissa, it was, it was, you know, there was no seats. It was not, you know, I don't mind the mix of seats and standing. I really don't, you know, I, if I can take a break from standing, I'm fine with that. There was no uh, sitting and my legs were killing me. And uh, uh, usually I'm like, I cannot, uh, I, I hope it doesn't end, you know, this concert. But I was like, listen, this is amazing. I love the music. It's gotta end, it's gotta end. I, I gotta sit down, you know, um, thankfully, you know, it was great music, you know, uh, it was, I mean, it's Raylan Baxter. I love his music. I'd love to see him again, hopefully at a venue where I had the choice to sit for a little while and then stand up to dance at certain songs, <laughs> but great show. I would see him again for sure. A couple weeks later, he played at Red Rocks and I just, I love Red Rocks as a venue and hopefully I get to see him there one day. 
oh man, he's just such a, once again, genuine. I, I love musicians where, and that's probably everyone on this list for me, but musicians where when you hear them singing or playing, you believe them, you know? Uh, not like other ones are liars or whatever, but it's like, you're like, oh, I can feel the emotion you're putting into this. I can feel that you were genuine when you wrote this and are performing it. And that's what I love. Raylan Baxter is one of those people for me. Great show, played all my favorite songs. It's just awesome. Um, I, Check out Raylan Baxter. I'm going to say that about everybody on here if you haven't heard of him. Um, next up, May 8th, 2021, Lake Street Dive at Red Rocks. I've been to a couple Red Rock shows. Actually, two, so a couple. Uh, Lake Street Dive. Once again, been listening to them since uh, I was probably in college. It was uh, Yeah, I was in college. I was about 19. I was listening to NPR. I had a late class that uh, was a film class and I got out of it around 11 o'clock at night, it ends at 10.45, talked with a friend, get in my car around 11, uh, driving home, and as I'm driving, I go to NPR and they're doing an interview with a band. Never heard of this band, loved the music they were playing, and was like, this is awesome. Uh, I've, I don't know if I've talked about Lake Street Dive before, I need to do them on a Music Monday also, but they are such a unique band and their audience was just like Fleet Foxes in terms of you it doesn't matter who you are you can enjoy this group and it was just it was awesome red rocks is beautiful anyways uh i loved the show they played all my favorite songs the only sad part about the show was that the um uh, the uh, uh, trumpet player i believe I, I hope i'm not wrong about this he had just retired to raise his you know child which you know awesome but also would have liked to see him but you know still a great band i love the show the only part about the show I didn't like, that I actually didn't like, was uh, ugh, they had a film festival going on in town and they played a pilot episode or whatever of a TV show that was like a political talk show. No one liked it. Like the entire audience, I, I don't think I've ever seen this before, but everyone in the audience was complaining verbally the entire show. The jokes that the comedian was using in the, in the political talk show, not funny. I mean, it's like, I don't know how many people want to go to a concert of a band that has nothing to do with politics and then have to sit through like a 20 minute long political satire thing happening and it, on top of that it's not even funny you know no joke that was made no joke because I don't know if there really were jokes that were made in the show were laughed at none of them people were actually booing and saying turn it off <laughs> but it was like it was such a it was like oh man like really you had to sit through this 20 minutes of thing it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Uh, it's just a bummer, you know? Uh, I have nothing wrong with the host of that show. I'm not even gonna mention who it was because I don't think that it's their fault. You know, sometimes people are given shows and they're like, oh, you're really good at doing this. Let's give you an entire show. And they're not necessarily meant for that. It's more they're good at the other skills and then hosting a show or their style doesn't really fit. Just didn't like it, just didn't like it. Uh, it was very awkward and it, ham-fisted it was very um the jokes were very forced to, to the point that even the people on the show it did not seem to enjoy the jokes so it's just anyways great concert great concert the concert that came right after that made up for all of that it was just a bummer that i've never experienced that where there's like okay before we start the show here's like a 20 minute long tv episode and i'm like well that sucks i'd rather be listening to a band that's just okay you know as an opener instead of that Ugh. anyways Please, uh, sorry, Lake Street J Dive, love them like crazy. Check them out. If you're ever feeling in a bad mood, any of their albums will cheer you up immediately. Uh, when I'm depressed, put on a Lake Street Dive. They're awesome. Uh, next up, uh, The Word uh, in April 26, 2015 at the Joy Theater. Messed up the intro of that one. Uh, the Word. I have never heard of this band, and it's because of my dad that I did. This was during Jazz Fest. It wasn't at Jazz Fest. My dad is, uh, in a loving way, I'm saying this, obsessed with concerts and uh, knows more bands and uh, musicians and information about them than I will ever know. And so me and my sister were at the first week of Jazz Fest with my dad. And after a whole day of going to concerts, we want to go get dinner and lay down. My dad's like, no, no, no. We are going to one more show. That's not even a part of Jazz Fest. It's at this theater called the Joy Theater. And it's funny because it was, like I said, almost midnight when it started. My sister and my dad were passed out during almost the entire show. But I was wide awake because they were amazing. They're literally a, like a super group 
of different soul bands and church bands. And the lead guy, I'm sorry, I don't know their names, but the lead, uh, one of the lead guys has a lap guitar and was so good at it. So it's a jam band with like, ah, just, I don't know how to explain it, but it was just so beautiful. And I just didn't expect that, you know? And uh, yeah, we're sitting down, not a whole lot of people are there. It's like nice air conditioned after a long day and the heat at the Jazz Fest. I'm just sitting there enjoying a, such a beautiful experience. And we got to see them uh, the next week. I came back with my dad and we got to see them live outside. But that experience of seeing them there was just so amazing. And I would love to see them again. It was magical, uh, the word. Check them out. They're great. Uh, it was just, it was beautiful. And I loved it. Uh, and the theater was beautiful too. It was just a great experience overall. And I'm, I feel bad for my sister and dad that they fell asleep because it's like, man, that what a great experience, you know, that uh, oof, just, it was great. Um, next up, October 13th, 2018, Rick Emmett at the Guitar Sanctuary. Uh, I will say that I think the first time I saw him was at Poor David's Pub. I can't remember the date for that and couldn't find any uh, stuff. So anyways, uh, Poor David's Pub's awesome, you know, uh, been there a bunch. Rick Emmett's amazing. If you've ever heard of the band Triumph, he was one of the singers and guitarists for that band. Uh, I've seen him several times, I think four maybe at this point, and I'd see him again once again because he's so talented at playing the guitar. Uh, his stories are hilarious, even if at some shows he repeats the same story. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. He is so charismatic when he's telling his stories that you don't care how many times you've heard him, you're gonna laugh again. You know, when he's talking about going through airport security, when he's talking, all these things, it's just so funny. And uh, he's got that little Canadian accent. Uh, Rick Emmett's so talented, love the man, love the shows that I've seen with him. Uh, as much as I like the shows where he brings his uh, fellow guitarist friend, or he sometimes brings two of them, I prefer the ones where it's just him and an acoustic guitar. I like him on electric, it sounds awesome, but where it's just him on stage with an acoustic guitar, talking to you at the audience, it's just amazing. Um, and he's a little bit of a, I know people could take this the wrong way, but when you think of rock stars, you can have images of their personalities. And he is a little bit of a diva, and it is hilarious, and it's just his thing. And the way he will talk about other band members or talk about, you know, his experiences or even complain about the sound quality and have to get into a verbal argument with the soundboard guy. It's just, you know, you're like, oh, that's Rick Emmett. You know, that's, he, he's being Rick Emmett, you know? Uh, I actually got to meet him after the concert twice and he remembered me the second time. So you know what? What a cool guy. Rick Emmett's awesome. Listen to Triumph. Their greatest hits is incredible. Uh, I love it. Uh, and if you want to hear a little bit of Rick Emmett where he's singing and a song he wrote, Suitcase Blues, beautiful. Um, very different than the rest of their music, but it's just a great song. Uh, all right, I'm trying to get through these because this video, I don't want it to be like 30 minutes. Uh, March 4th, 2023, Buddy Guy at the Moody Theater. I have seen Buddy Guy several times and uh, I would probably say each show was 10 out of 10. The reason this one is on the list is because it's his final tour. He played longer than any of the shows I've seen him at. I've seen him at Jazz Fest, I've seen him at other places in Austin, but this was so incredible. Uh, he just, he, it's like, some people maybe on their final tour are not, I don't know, I don't, I, I've never seen a final tour except for him. And it just was like, I want to show you all of the years that have combined to be at this point. And he just went over the top with it. Uh, it was amazing. If you have not seen Buddy Guy uh, in concert, check out some videos on YouTube. If you've not listened to his stuff, check it out. Such a fun, enjoyable person to watch on stage. Uh, hilarious too. I think what's funny though to me is that, uh, oh, I will mention this. Opening act, a young guitarist. Uh, she is, I think, 21 maybe and once again I feel really bad I can't remember her name but look up the concert I'm talking about where I said at the beginning the date and the location she was such a good guitarist I don't think I've heard anyone other than classic rock legends like Stevie Ray Vaughan or you know Jimi Hendrix or Prince play the guitar similarly in any way to what she was doing and when she announced that her one of her favorite people that she looked up to besides Buddy Guy was Steve Ray Vaughan you could tell she was so good and when, they, when she said what her age was I was just like oh my god like this this woman was so 
talented at their guitar. Oh, it's beautiful. I really hope, it's just, I love when someone of like my generation or age group or around there can take what is considered old classic rock, you know, I don't think it is, but you know, and still play it today with such appreciation that it sounds almost as good, if not as good as the classics. And it's just, it was awesome. Uh, but it's a great show in general. I love Buddy Guy. And he brought her up along with some of the other band members uh, that showed up at the beginning of the show, uh, the uh, opening acts, to play with him during the finale, which is always cool when they do that. Especially when it's your final tour, and instead of just hogging the stage, which I'm not saying he would have done anyways, but he literally brought them all up and did solos with them and played with them, and that's just so cool. Um, so, Buddy Guy's amazing. Seen him numerous times. I, it was great. I love Buddy Guy. Uh, uh, he deserves to. Uh, he deserves to retire. He's been doing it so long. He's like one of, if not the last, great blues guitar player still alive. And uh, what an amazing, talented musician. Um, so damn right, I got the blues. <laughs> uh, next up, July fifteenth, twenty fifteen, Red Rocks Amphitheater, Wilco. That's right. Uh, this was amazing. Wilco had played at Red Rocks several years before, and my dad and I were so upset that we weren't able to see them there. And we were hoping the day that they would come back, uh, we would be able to see them. And that first time, the, the first time they did it, they released the soundboard of the entire concert. So we, he and I had been able to listen to it and be like, oh my God, we missed such a good show, you know? And then we get to see this show. It goes way longer than any Wilco show I think I've ever seen. Uh, it, they have like three encores. The band keeps getting smaller and smaller. The stage gets darker and darker until they're just playing with acoustic instruments. It's so beautiful, so unique. Uh, you're up there on the, on the beautiful red rocks. The stars are up in the sky. The lights are down low. It was just incredible. And oh my God, it, it just amazing, amazing show. Uh, Wilco will never let me down as far as I'm concerned. Uh, at least they haven't yet. And it was just amazing. I. I Red Rocks is a great venue. If you have a band that's playing there, go see them that you enjoy. Uh, but, oh man, such a great show. And I love Wilco. So, I mean, what more can I say about Wilco? I could probably talk about them forever. <clears throat> Last on the top 10 list is at Jazz Fest, the Jazz Fest show. Now, this was hard because there were several bands that I saw at Jazz Fest. Uh, Elton John is the one I'm going to talk about. Elton John's the one that's on the top 10. But I wanted to put The Who on there. I saw... Um, I'm so upset that I can't remember this, uh, but you know, uh, he, uh, the Margaritaville guy, Jimmy Buffett, I saw Lady Gaga, you know, uh, I saw Pitbull, I would I would not put Pitbull on my top 10 at all, uh, no offense, uh, but I saw so many great, even people I've never heard of that were just the smaller tents, so many great people that deserve to be on the top 10, but Elton John, uh, it's funny because he had such a huge crowd, I'm there with my dad, and I'm like, you know, I know a good amount of Elton John songs, you know, but he's had such a long career, you know, uh, that w it was such a long show. I, I don't know how long it was, but it was, I, I would almost say almost like three hours long. And the crazy part about it is that by the end of it, I was like, I'm pretty sure I knew every single song. And I have at that point never listened to an Elton John album, not one. And somehow I had heard <laughs> three hours worth of Elton John music previously during my life. And I was like, that tells you <laughs> how like good, talented, like uh, 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 like famous. It was just crazy, you know? I love the show. He's such a great performer. I mean, of course, it's Elton John. And I just loved it. It was just beautiful. And I just like, I was like, I can't believe, <laughs> that's what really blew me away. I can't believe I knew like maybe two songs I didn't know, but I was like, this is crazy. As someone who literally had never listened to any of his records, not one, somehow through the radio, movies, television, whatever, I had heard like three hours worth of Elton John music in my life. And it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, what a great show. So I could talk about music forever. I don't know if you can tell that, uh, but because besides my cancer stuff I talk about on this channel, I think the most videos I have besides that uh, is me talking about music. So. Music's my passion. I love it. Uh, I create music. I'm not even, I won't even say not even close to the people I've just talked about. Uh, but I, I, it, 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 every day I listen to music. Every day. Uh, it's gotten me through the worst moments in my life. It has uh, lifted me up. It has uh, 
made me happier on the happy days. It's made me happier on the sad days. Music is amazing. When I find a new album, even if it's from the 80s or something, and I haven't heard it before, I'm just like, oh my God, I found a treasure chest of beautiful emotional uh, energy. And I just connect with music in such a way. Uh, you know, I put my headphones on, I blast it from my speakers, I just sit there, eyes closed, and enjoy some like, I don't know what to call it, but it is beautiful and it touches my soul. And I love, I love it, I really do. Now the bummer part is that there's bands like Steve Ray Vaughan or Prince that I can never see uh, because unfortunately they've passed away. Uh, but I, I'm just so lucky to be able to see who I get to see. I can thank my dad for that. Uh, for I mean, like I like every except for the Raylan Baxter, which Melissa you know purchased for me to go with her. Uh, my dad has helped me get to every one of those shows on that list. And it just means the world to me. You know, that he has helped me be able to see those ex and be with those experiences. Um, even ones I never would have even gone to if it wasn't for him, you know. Uh, and just an honorable mention, besides those other bands I talked about, if this wasn't a, you know, uh, the bands William grew up listening to, <laughs> I, and I'm not being family biased, my uncles, both of them, are so talented musicians. Definitely, oh man, check them out. David Starfire. If you've ever been to Burning Man, which I'm sure half my audience has been to, <laughs> he performs there, super talented guy. And of course, Alan Joseph, my other uncle, also very talented. Uh, I've seen both of them perform. Uh, David multiple times at like EDM concerts, uh, and I even got to take pictures of him for his website at one point. That was really fun. Um, and then Alan, I've seen him play acoustic, I've seen different stuff. It's just so much fun, you know. Uh, like I said, it runs in my family, music, you know. Uh, I'm not saying I'm like them in terms of they can just create all this music with their mind like that, but it's just awesome, you know. Music's great. <laughs> it's just me, maybe, but I love music, uh, and I will forever. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know this is very different. I know this isn't, you know, really informational when it comes to cancer. And uh, if you like music videos like this, I'm going to keep making more in between the cancer stuff. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for walking. Walking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I promise I didn't have a Red Bull before drinking this. Music just makes me that excited. See you guys in the next one.